In today's video, we're going to be talking about um, changing one part of your shape and how it affects the volume and the surface area based on the original shape. So we're going to start off with an exploration of volume for rectangular prisms. The first thing it asks you to do is find the volume of this first rectangular prism. Remember that the volume formula is volume equals length times width times height. Our length is 4, our width is 2, and the height is 3. So go ahead and try to fill in that volume formula to find the volume of this rectangular prism. Okay, you should get a volume of 24 feet cubed for this first rectangular prism. Over on to the right, it then says, if we multiply the height by 3, what is the new volume? So we have the same length of 4 and the same width of 2, but our height is now um, 9. So they multiply that height by 3. So if we still are going to use volume equals length times width times height, we can go ahead and fill in our new attributes. We have our length of 4, width of 2, height of 9. That gets us a volume of 72, and that's 72 feet cubed. It says how many times bigger is the volume of the new shape? To figure this out, we're going to take the new shape, 72, and divide it by the volume of the original shape, which was 24. When you do that, you get 3. That means that this new one is 3 times as um, big as that first shape was. So our volume increased by 3 times. So we can say that the volume of the first shape was that original volume formula, but now the new shape is going to have a volume of 3 times the length, width, and height of the first. So our scale factor was 3 here. We multiplied the height by 3, and that made our volume 3 times as large. So go ahead and try this example. It says find the volume of this rectangular prism. So use your volume equals length times width times height formula. And then figure out what it's going to be if you multiply the length by 2. What's the new volume going to be? We're going to see how much bigger the volume of this shape is. So go ahead and pause the video, try it on your own, and see if you can come up with the conclusion. Once you've tried those on your own, you can go ahead and check your work here. Um, the volume for the first one is 45 centimeters cubed. And then when you're multiplying that length by 2 in the second one, you end up with a volume of 90 centimeters cubed. So to figure out how many times bigger is the volume of the new shape, we say 90, which is our new shape volume, divided by 45, the old shape volume. And 90 divided by 45 is 2. So this volume is twice as big as the first shape. And that makes sense because our length was multiplied by 2. So the scale factor in this case was 2. That would mean that the new volume formula is volume equals 2 times length times width times height for this rectangular prism. So we're going to try one more, and it says this time we will divide the length by 2. So we're going to find the volume first of this one. Volume equals length times width times height. And go ahead and try that on your own. So here we found the volume of the first rectangular prism was 12 inches cubed. And then it said if you divide the length by 2, what's the new volume? It ends up being that we have 12 inches cubed for the first one and then 6 inches cubed for the second. It says how many times smaller is the volume of the new shape? So we take our new shape, 6, and divide it by the old shape's volume of 12. That reduces to 1 half. That means that the volume of this shape on the right is going to be half the size of the volume of the other. And it makes sense because one of our sides was cut in half, so we have half of what we were starting with. So the volume here would be um, affected with a scale factor of one half, so one half length times width times height is what our new formula would be. So when it says what can you conclude about changing what changing one measurement does to the volume, we can say when one side changes by a scale factor we can say that the volume will change by the same scale factor. So now that we've explored volume, we're going to take a look at the surface area exploration. Um, for rectangular prisms. So if you want to find the surface area of this rectangular prism, remember that the surface area formula is SA equals 2 times length times width 
plus 2 times length times height, plus 2 times width times height. Our length is 4, our width is 2, and the height is 3. We replace each of the values. We say 2 times 4 times 2, plus 2 times 4 times 3, plus 2 times 2 times 3. Remember that multiplication comes before addition, so 2 times 4 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, plus 2 times 4 is 8, 8 times 3 is 24, plus 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12. Go ahead and add each of those faces together and you get 52. So surface area of this shape is 52 feet squared. Now in the second part, it asks us to multiply the height by 3. What's the new surface area going to be? So all the dimensions are the same except for our height here. That's going to change. So go ahead and try to figure out what the new surface area is going to be and then figure out if it's going to be a certain amount bigger than the first surface area was. Once you find the surface area for this second shape, we figure out that 124 feet squared is that surface area. It says how many times bigger is the new surface area. So we take 124 and divide it by the old surface area of 52 and that gets us 2.384 and then a decimal just that just kind of keeps on going. So we can't really say that there was a certain scale factor here because we multiplied the height by 3 but it didn't increase by 3 times like the volume was. So we can say though our original surface area formula was SA equals 2 times length times width plus 2 times length but then we multiplied our height by 2 so we could say 2H. And then we add 2 times our width times 2 times our height. That's what we did to that formula. So really it becomes SA equals 2 length width plus 4 length times height plus 4 width times height. I'm just multiplying those numbers and making the coefficient 4 instead of that 2 times 2. So you can see that since the 4's are there, height is listed here and here. Our original formula has a 2 where these 4's now are, so we can say, well, we multiplied the height by 2 then in this formula, and that got us the new surface area formula for this specific rectangular prism. Okay, I want you to try this one on your own. You're going to find the surface area of both of these prisms. The first, the dimensions are given to you, and then they're multiplying the length by 2. So we need to find the new surface area. Remember, we figured out in the first one that it's not going to be quite an exact scale factor like we had in volume. So we do have to calculate both of these surface areas and then figure out how the formula is going to be adjusted a little bit. So go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own. So now that you found the surface areas for both of these shapes, go ahead and check to make sure that they're correct. We had 81 centimeters squared and then 126 centimeters squared. So how many times bigger is the new surface area? We divide 126 by 81 and that gets us 1.5 repeating. So again, it's not quite as perfect scale factor where we were multiplying by uh, the length by 2, so it's not multiplied by 2, it's just um, some number there that doesn't really mean anything to us. But we can say that our original surface area formula was 2 length times width plus 2 length times height plus 2 width times height, and in this case we changed it into our length was going to be doubled. That means we have 2 times twice the length times the width plus 2 times twice the length times the height plus 2 times the width and the height of that original um, problem or of that original rectangular prism. So now our new surface area formula becomes 4 length width plus 4 length height plus 2 width height. And we see that the two that were changed both had an L in them, so that means that our length was actually multiplied by 2 because to get from 2 to 4 we have to multiply by 2. So it was just our length that was affected and it did change our surface area but it did not affect it to make it twice as big. So we have one more example then and you're, this time you're going to be dividing the length by 2. So we can probably estimate that it is going to make a smaller surface area but I, we can't necessarily say that it'll be half the surface area of the first one. So go ahead and pause the video, find the surface area for each of these rectangular prisms, and then we can compare their two surface areas. 
Now that you've found the surface areas for both of these rectangular prisms, we have 34 inches squared and then 20 inches squared. We went from, tw or we have 20 now, and we're dividing that by 34. That gets us 0.588 and it kind of keeps on going there. So again, not perfect one half of that um, first rectangular prism surface area. So we can just say our surface area was changed by our length was being divided by two. So remember dividing by two is the same as multiplying by one half. So our surface area formula is two times our length, but this time our length was multiplied by one half times our width, plus two times again our length, but it was in half, so half our length times the height, plus two times the width and the height. That reduces to surface area equals two times one half, that's just one, so we have length times width plus two times one half, again just one, so that's our length times our height plus two times the width times the height. So that's our kind of adjusted surface area formula from that first rectangular prism and dividing that length in half. So this would be how you would find your new surface area. So what can we conclude about changing one measurement? What does it do to the surface area? Well, we can't say that there's one scale factor to determine the new surface area, but we did notice that when we increase the length of a side, um, we will increase the surface area, and when we decrease the length of a side, it will decrease the surface area. So there's a little summary of what I just said. You can mark that down in your notes. Once you've gotten all that, feel free to go back into the video and watch anything over again that you weren't quite sure about. Um, and then from there, you can go ahead and try some of the problems on the following page on your own to give this stuff a try. Thank you for watching.